Hey, I'm Mike Lemon from Cyber Safe Teen. Today we have a special guest in our series of solutions for parents who are trying to find the right app or the right device uh, for their child who is who's now online. Today we'll be talking to co-founder of Pinwheel, Isaiah McPeak, and you have several different titles. So let me I wrote some of these down here. You got uh, <laughs> co-founder, chief operating officer, chief design officer, and screen zombie hunter. How'd you get all those uh, those titles in one? Well, you know, when when you uh, when you launch a startup yourself, you get to have some leeway with um, with how fun it is. But uh, you also actually do have all the jobs, right? So a lot of sleepless nights and being live support on Christmas Day, and uh, you, you wear all the hats as as your company succeeds and grows, and then you start giving those hats away. So I've given some away. I've still got a few. <laughs> still got a few left. Keeping still the chief, not, the uh, uh, screen zombie hunter though. That, yeah, that's the end one. I just want to wear a hoodie that that says screen zombie hunter and and uh, uh, put my feet on my desk and read about uh, childhood wellness. That's that's you know the ten years from now. That's what I'll be doing. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> so. For for someone who doesn't know what Pinwheel is, can you kind of give an overall description of what it is? Yes. So uh, Pinwheel is a take on the kid phone problem. And uh, wh what we saw is that band-aiding a adult smartphone is always a losing battle because, you know, just look at iOS 14, brand new uh, operating system. Well, all the apps on the ecosystem, all the parental controls which half of them had had to sue to even be available, they have to catch up. And so a child's always trying to work around it. And Silicon Valley is always trying to work around uh, your own family's values to try to get you to ads um, because the app stores are uh, the 35th largest economy in the world. They're uh, GDP, um, YouTube kids, $500 billion industry sucking attention into the screen so there's every incentive by by the ones making these to pull your child in every incentive uh, uh from from both the hardware and then you you've got family app makers who want to make let's call it healthy fruit but mm -hmm. they don't have a good tree that's also healthy to to put that on if that makes sense and so we said yeah let's take a look at instead of trying to make the latest greatest parental control app or whatever what if we could actually make a new healthy tree and actually have an alternative app store um, with an operating system designed from the ground up for kids? And so that's what we've done is, is we've taken a, uh, this has got to be a tool, not a toy approach to, mm -hmm. to smartphones and built an operating system and, and phone from the ground up. That's pretty awesome. A great way to explain it too. So where did you get kind of your passion for this? How did you kind of say, this is what I want to do and really have a driving force? Because like you said, you're spending so many nights up thinking about this, designing things. Where does that passion come from? Uh, so it comes from my, my own kids. I, I have a 12-year-old daughter and a 7-year-old daughter now. And uh, it's, it's beyond serendipity. Um, I was having a discussion with my then 10-year-old daughter, the latest, why can't I have a phone? <laughs> and... Uh, Afterwards, you know, when she went to bed, I was just despairing. I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. And I was talking with my wife about it. You know, the dumb phone on the one side, the flip phone, and and fighting and figuring out parental controls on the other. This isn't cool. And uh, the very next day, my co-founder and CEO, Dane, called me out of the blue. And he said, hey, you want to help solve the kid phone problem? And I'm like, yes, I'm in. Whatever it is, I am in. And so... Um, that has really driven and continues to drive is, is at the end of the day, we are making this for our kids. Um, his his catalyzing moment was his seven-year-old's best friend giving a phone and them going, what is this thing? Like, are you serious that this is happening and trying to research it and figure it out? And so I think, you know, as as technologists and, and venture capitalists and um, uh, startup guys, we have some skills to bring to the problem, but when it comes to the problem and why we're passionate about it, it's the same as every parent. Excellent. And so you, you kind of uh, touched on it for a minute, but kind of where, where the, the mission come from and kind of how did it start and kind of how does it, how has it changed as you've gone through these last couple of years? Yeah. So the, the vision we locked in on from the very beginning is pretty solid, which is, um, Technology kind of took a left turn back in the early 2000s. And, and I, I think 
I want to help parents kind of forgive themselves about this too. When Facebook first came into existence and started being more than uh, just for colleges, it was really cool to connect with people that you hadn't heard of since 1982. And there they were, and you found them. And it was like, there's a lot of joy and fun in building that. And then uh, Nir Eyal wrote this book called Hooked, which capitalizes on the latest neuroscience to understand how to basically how do people stay in a casino um, and how can we make that be all about user engagement in our our apps and so it sort of uh, became a, a blueprint for the lowest base form of technology design to try to get somebody to open this app and be on this app as much of the day as possible and that's how venture capitalists were rewarding it by backing it with cash so we sort of made this uh, the the left turn is to sell our attention for money, yeah. and we're the products <laughs> instead of the customers when we do that. But it's hard because to to get back on track, you have to say I'm willing to pay for things that I need yeah. instead of having an advertiser pay for things that I need. And so you know it's understandable uh, why we would take that left turn. But it's it's its own economy now where we're selling and reselling humankind's most precious gift, which is attention. Um, and now we're doing it to kids. You know, uh, Facebook is, is in the middle of trying to make Instagram kids, you know, and you've got the app stores that can't be deleted from your phone and the ads that are just trying to pull them in. And they literally don't have uh, the parts of their brain required to resist the blinky, flashy lights. And so we're, we're giving kids handheld casinos. And um, our, our vision is, wow, we've got to say no to that, but we have to say no without wagging our fingers at technology because technology does make us superhuman in some ways. You know, you can build things that you never imagined. You can get more done. You can uh, design things like it's, it's really what if we could stop dreading this smartphone thing and make it be more like a fun robot? like we all imagined in the early 90s when you're thinking about futuristic things, right? It's like, mm -hmm. that's fun. It's a, it's an exoskeleton. It's a, a floor cleaning, food making. Like, you know, you, you had all these great ideas about technology. Nobody ever thought, oh, you're going to be glued to this screen in front of your eyeballs, sucking your soul out, right? So the, the, the vision is humans back over technology instead yeah. of technology over humans. And there's a couple ways to say it. Some of them are on the wall behind me, uh, but they, they have to do with being a creator, not a consumer, mm -hmm. and uh, living a life of adventure, but being okay with powering up. You know, learning a new skill powers you up. Having a skateboard or a bike powers you up. A phone should be the same way. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent way of putting that. I, I do. I do like that. So is, is there a certain type of parent or a situation that the parent is in to where that's kind of your, uh, super, talking about superpower, your superpower mm -hmm. zone of we, we really can help at the highest level of this type of parent, this type of situation. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the sweet spot is the first phone. We can talk a little Excellent. bit about remedial phones, you know, if the cat's already out of the bag. Um, but as a first phone, that's that's where what we're doing is magical because there's no app store on the phone and the phone switches modes through the day. So think, you know, at night mode, it's a brick. All it can do is text and call mom and dad. And you can make it that way any time of the day, but the apps show or hide based on what mode that it's in. And then you have a safe list for communication. So there's no spam calls. Uh, no one can get through unless they're approved on your safe list. And again, the safe list is still governed by mode. So you could say, you know, friends can call or text. You can do that from three to five and it'll just save those texts in the database until then. So, um, and then you can get complete text history. So uh, you, your, your child can't delete the text away in a way that you can't see them. You can control whether or that's, not they're sending pretty big. Pretty images, big. right? It's, it's huge. Um, and so, you know, those are just kind of features, but you kind of get the sense of what this is about is about teaching your child technology in a really healthy way. And the phone's not going to fight you on that. It's not going to be pushing more, 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 you know, uh, instead it's going to be kind of your secret weapon. And so um, things like uh, all the dangers of screen time in the wait till eighth campaign mm -hmm. sort of go away 
because those are really all targeting games, social media, and open internet access. That's where yeah. the pitfalls are. And we just put a hard line. Those aren't on the phone. Now start thinking of it as a toy. And all of a sudden, um, you can stop the fighting. And that's what I've been able to experience in my home is what, what we've noticed is very true for most uh, American households is the phone is one of the number one sources of drama in the home, whether you do have one or don't have one. Right, right, exactly. Giving them a tool earlier now, even as crazy as it sounds, at seven, eight, nine, where they have you know a couple things on it. It's got their musical ear trainer. Maybe it's got Duolingo at certain types of the day. And then you've got um, uh, texting and calling, but it's just mom and dad to start with. And you're going to work through things that at that age are cute instead of scary. So you end up with uh, my CEO's son, when he got the first, uh, one of the first prototype, uh, prototype phones, he called his parents at 11.30 p.m. and said, I want a glass of water. <laughs> like, that's not how this works, <laughs> you know. And so <laughs> it's not the digital uh, little little bell. <laughs> but but that gave an opportunity to teach about it, right? Uh, right. Another another customer had uh, their their kid um, was able to uh, have. I'm trying to think which one it was. Now it's like either Duo or um, it was one of the video calling that's a safe video calling app, mm -hmm. and they left it on with their grandma for four hours. And it burned up all their data for the month. Well, it in an adult world, we have to pay for that. Yeah. In a kid world, guess you'll get data next month. <laughs> and, you know, you learn it. And so uh, the, the idea is, as a first phone, how can we teach our kids the things that our parents were never able to teach us because they didn't have to deal with this whole smartphone thing? And drip it out one little piece as a time at a time as the child develops. Excellent, excellent. And you know, I, I was talking about being able to put it in different modes. I watched some videos on your uh, the uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called. The basically for parent the parent portal. That's yeah. What it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and how basically you set up a certain mode. So like a school day, you could say you know, it was is off at this time of night. Comes on this time. And then maybe you only have access to you know, to, uh, to audio, if you want to listen to songs or something like that right. while they're getting ready and then off, you can only call mom and dad during school or something like that. And then when they're school at home, then you can set up times that they can be on there for, uh, you know, while they're, while they're at home. Right. And w once you set it up, it looks like it's basically just, you know, you decide the day you click on the day and you set it up and set up the whole week for the whole school year, if you want to, and then you can add access as you go. Is that kind of, Am I, am I, was You're I describing it right? exactly right. Yep. And so so the classic view is just a seven day of the week view. And you sort of pick what you want the days to be. Mm -hmm. And but you can go in the future or back. But most people will have like a standard school day. And then they might have one kind of weekend day or they might do Saturday and Sunday different. And then people will build things. You know, some some people homeschool three days a week and they go to something else two days a week or they have horseback riding lesson day, or they have uh, they go on a road trip, you know, and so you can make a mode on the fly right from your phone, and it just boom updates, uh, mm -hmm. and you can save that, you know, so that next time you're on a holiday, you use the same one, or you can update it. Excellent. And so with with your phone, it's not just limited to calls and text. It is actually you can put certain apps on there. Now the the apps that you all have approved, that you all have built. Or how if a parent wants one that's not on there, how does that how do you handle that? Right. So it is an extremely limited and curated app experience. And uh, we are in constant contact with our customers about that. So we we try to put through about three to five new apps a week based on customer requests, but we honestly we say no to about 80% of them. And I'll tell you some funny stories in a second about that uh, if you want. But uh, they are not apps built by us other than a couple. Um, we, we built some of the core apps to make it work, but you can put Spotify on there if you want to, or Spotify Kids or Amazon Music or um, you know whatever music player it is that you probably use, then uh, you can go that way. Uh, or you could say no to any of that. The kid doesn't know because the only place that you see what apps are even curated by us to be available is on your phone, not on their yeah. phone. Um, 
And so we, we've curated around 150 apps that we consider tools, not toys, and we put them into different categories, um, varying from like religion to education to uh, COVID schooling to communication um, and all kinds of skill training. You know, people have different sports training apps or music yeah. training, things like that. Uh, however, here's the criteria we apply, uh, and this is built with our therapist council, um, is first of all, it can't be an ad revenue generated app. So if it's trying to boost your engagement to get you to watch advertisements and nobody wants these advertisements being shown to their kids. Uh, yep. And so if that's how it's making money, then it can't come to our app store. Um, second of all, there's a uh, the no workarounds issue. And this is what dings a lot of apps. So for example, uh, it's just, it's easier now when you make an app to throw in extra features that are almost push button to just throw in like a, a complete internet browser. And you'll probably, you, you notice this, like weird apps like Yelp, Gmail, they have internet browsers inside of them in. instead yeah. of moving to another internet browser. Well, that's going to cause it to not be on our phone because we don't want there to be a workaround to the open internet on a pinwheel phone. Um, so you get really obscure cases like the U version of the Bible. We had to pull it off because the Facebook and Instagram links in the bottom open up full internet browsers. And you have all these stories of kids who are telling their parents they're reading the scripture and in reality, they're browsing social There's, media or worse. Yep, they're surfing. Yeah, and so we we have a whole team. We actually have a team of four people who that's all they do is they look for these workarounds and loopholes in the app qualification process and cut them out so that a parent can trust this is the unsupervisable device. This is one that I don't even have to have rules about. You can't go to bed with it because when they go to bed with it, all that's available is a talk down sleep meditation until 9 p.m. and then nothing, you know? Yeah. So um, so that's that's the idea around apps, but we're always getting more requests like, uh, you know, I my kid has uh, to manage their diabetes and needs this specific app to do that with, or uh, we want to teach our kid investing and we use this specific app to, to do that. Um, so those are the kinds of requests we're always getting and trying to accommodate while also smashing down the loopholes and workarounds. Yeah, those uh, those workarounds. I mean, we, we did some videos. It's been a couple of years ago when when screen time kind of first took over, mm -hmm. and uh, it was great. But you know, you can still go to the the policies and click on those links, and boom, you're on there. I mean, yeah. so yeah, that's that's awesome that you were doing that research so parents don't have to. Let me ask you: Are there are there certain types of uh, situations where parents you're not going to be able to help them as much, or that's not really what it was designed for? Is there, yes, is that kind of a situation? Who, who would that be? So th there's a couple. Um, the first one is if you are uh, there's there's different reasons to have aversion to Silicon Val Valley values, and one mm -hmm. of them is around privacy. That's not really what our phone is is built to fight. So. Um, we do have some Google apps on there as long as they don't have these workarounds. And that means that they come with certain uh, location services and different things like that that are baked in. And we're just not the right fit for someone who's looking for a complete, like kind of off the grid sort mm -hmm. of solution. We're the right fit for who someone who's looking for, I don't want my kids being pulled into the screen addiction kind of uh, concerns and, uh, but but they kind of need to be pro tech at the end of the day. Yeah. At the end of the day, we think smartphones are cool. <laughs> and so uh, that, that you know, that is gonna be one kind. And then the, the other is um, as your child grow is growing into an adult, we're working on paving the way uh, to, to that. And we're actually, our, our therapists right now, all of our R&D is focused on the teenage experience. But it's not there yet for people who are getting uh, job interviews. Well, they're going to be yeah. blocked by the safe list. You can't actually receive calls from strange numbers. So, um, you know, our hope is a year or so from now, we'll be able to say we've got the complete journey to adulthood mapped, but we don't right now. And so this is this is something that is a, a most of childhood solution, but but as they're really stepping into adulthood, it's probably not going to work. So would you say uh, really kind of focusing on elementary, middle school, and then kind of beginning high school? 
first yeah, I, I, I think we've got the tweens and early teens nailed down. The the first reason that you would say, um, the the two first reasons that that you'd say um, to to not have the phone anymore. One is you do want them to have social media or something like that because you know maybe you're focused on building their brand or you just are tired of fighting that drama, right? Same as the yeah. phone drama before. Right. Now you have to fight whether or not they have Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and you know I could tell you all kinds of stories why you probably don't want that, but it's it can be a losing battle. So that's one reason. Um, and then the second would be be this whole uh, receiving numbers from strangers. If you don't want to manage the safe list anymore uh, or, or have them operate by a safe list anymore, then that's a reason to, to stop using our phone. That's pretty much it. Uh, before that, you're in a good spot. And I'll tell you, this is funny. We have an intense process built around keeping phones, uh, keeping adults from buying our phone because we have that problem. Um, yeah. A lot of adults are like, well, this is great because it's going to keep me off of social media and games. You know, <laughs> we, yeah. we know we don't have necessarily healthy relationships with our phones. And so we have this like step by step process whereby we talk them out of it beforehand. And then we're like, hey, it looks like you're an adult. You don't want this. You can send it back free right now um, because of, of those exact reasons I just described. It's you know, you you yeah, might want to order pizza. <laughs> It's an adult, and then you might click on it and say, This is not for you. Yeah. <laughs> Too much big letters. Not for you. Uh, yeah. Excellent. So, kind of, what's the next step for a parent who's interested in finding out more about Pinwheel? So, uh, our website is not like that uh, intense to, to read, and that'd be a great Let spot. Me, I'll pull it up here. Thank you. Well, we'll see technology right got to move move screens now there we go there we go pinwheel.com and if you go to the uh, product tabs then you can take a a look at kind of the different main features of the, of the phone. So it'll it'll look at what the phone is like, what it does, it'll look at what the parent side is like and and what that does. I mean then you can even try it for uh at, at no cost the the parent side and you can go in there and see okay, what would it be like to create my own caregiver portal account and um make some configurations. Excellent. Yeah, it always it kind of just blows my mind where you know, parents are like, how do I lock down my iPhone? I just got from my kid, and you, know, you just yeah. spend a thousand dollars on an iPhone, and <laughs> you want to take all the the uh, abilities away. Yeah, you so. just put the powers of the universe in their hand, and then uh, you want to make it do five percent of what it can do. Um, so that that was one of the big objectives we realized, and we did a lot of research with kids. It's got to look like a smartphone, mm -hmm. and so these do. You can get the same rose gold cases that your moms have. You know, um, it. Yeah. It's not something you're going to be embarrassed by, right? You're not going to break out the uh, the old the old razor, which yeah. is cool in this time, <laughs> but not too cool right now. Yeah, and you're not going to have some of the gab downsides of like, well, I can listen to music as long as I plug it in like it's 1999 to my computer yeah. and I, I transfer this, you know, stuff to the SD card or whatever. So really, it's just kind of a a full. Well, it's it's a it's a smartphone, but has basically what the parents that I've been talking to have been been wanting: be that control, give parents the more of that control, and take out the workarounds. That's a it's a good way for me to kind of explain. That's that. right. It's a progressive progressive smartphone, and and I think one of the biggest pieces that people love is, um, you know, when when you get your kid a regular smartphone, you have to actually hold it in your hand to configure things to check yeah. on their texts, all that kind of stuff. One of the the pieces of genius here is that you don't have to ask your kid to hand over their phone ever. You can control That's all the, the settings, the apps, and see their complete text history right from your phone. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we've got some uh, questions from our uh, Cyber Safe Teen Nation people, and uh, I'll just uh, kind of run through these four questions real quick. Okay. And Tell me what you think. Uh, I have a parent who wants a call and text only. Uh, do not want them to be able to access the internet or Wi-Fi's at school. 
Right. What you, kind of what would you tell them about that? Okay, I tell them a couple of things. Um, first of all, that's you know if you're saying no internet, you may not realize that a lot of apps are powered by the internet. You probably mean no browser, right? Because that's where kids can start searching for for different things and really get into uh, a, a lot of trouble. But um, you know if you mean really no apps then I'd say that's probably a pretty losing battle. You're going to want to be right past telephone and text only real quick because there are good apps out there that are really helpful for kids. And I mentioned some of them, um, uh, you know, but all kinds like coin collection apps, whatever their interests are, there are now digital experiences. And in a world where information is free, we want our kids to be able to participate in that world um, without getting online, right? And so yeah. without uh, being on the internet, but they might have data. They might have low levels of data. It's just, it's probably not how we think of it because it's not a browser, right? So I would suggest um, if you're really just sold on only a phone number, uh, calling and texting, then you probably want a flip phone. Uh, you want a dumb phone um, because image texting is one of the scariest things that's out there. And, yeah. and you want to get a phone that doesn't have that capability. Uh, it, it, if you're at all convinced by anything I've said today, then you'd think a pinwheel is actually probably a really great answer because you can control image texting. You can make it do just calling and texting, but you can also start to slowly drip out these apps that build skills and are actually helpful for experiences they'll have, whether that's soccer training, you know, interacting with their coach on some app or um, you want them to have ninja focus meditation or a digital devotional. You know, there, there, there's yep. a lot of little things that you can slowly drip out and teach them how to use technology well instead of throwing them the keys one day uh, when, they, when they go from zero to 60. So it's really a way to uh, kind of future proof that phone, the fact they can just make it call and text only, but then they can actually start giving them more uh, access as, as they go along. That's right. And, and and you get to drip it out, you know, hopefully while your kids still trust you, you know, there's that yep. round 11 to 14 where they start to not believe you're the smartest person in the world at all. Um, it's a good idea. To, to themselves. Yeah. <laughs> get, get the phone started before that happens. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Speaking of that, uh, what kind of advice would you give a parent who's looking to switch their child from an iPhone or Android uh, to a, a pinwheel phone? Okay. So this, this is a difficult one for us because I don't ever want to be in the position as, a, as somebody who makes products, you know, for, for people of making a product somebody hates, <laughs> you know, I only want to make products that people love. And it's really fun to watch a, a 10 or 11 year old get their first phone via pinwheel and be just thrilled to death that they don't have to wait another two years like their parents had been saying, right? So that's all over mm -hmm. here. When you're talking remedial device, the most important aspect is that uh, technology can't be used as a punishment or a reward when it's just a tool. Yeah, and this is where we have to separate in our minds. Yes, this is this is a powerful device, but the one that is a pinwheel one has no entertainment. It has no gaming console. There's nothing rewarding about it. You're not gonna be glued to your screen to do three hours of ninja focus meditation, right? That'd, that'd be a pretty weird day um, yeah. for that to happen. And so if you can rewire successfully with your team, here's why we're going to a um, tool only phone approach, then you can probably succeed. Uh, some of the things that we found that really help with that are phones are for being tools and gaming consoles, other systems, uh, televisions, computers mm -hmm. are for entertainment or anything like that because that's part of the problem we're facing here. It's not just like whether you do this or don't do this, it's that this phone device fights your intentions. And so I could have every intention right now of looking at my calendar. I'm gonna open my phone and look at my calendar, but there's 15 other areas of life screaming at me, some of which are a lot more interesting than both my right. calendar and my job, right? And so uh, we're trying to help parents in that remedial situation communicate to and with their teen and get that buy-in that, hey, this thing attached to my body 24-7, I don't want it to make me somebody I don't want to be. 
you know, I'm going to use other things that require a little more intention uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, being a consumer. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's, that's my advice. Uh, I, I would say one last thing is uh, we were really skeptical about this. And then in the early days of our testing, we had several um, remedial situations and, and some of them uh, real horror stories of, of kids who had been groomed by predators or, um, you know, complete secret relationships that went really, really far south, but the parent had no idea. And um, one of our favorite reviews was like, look, this was really hard for us when we switched our 15 year old daughter from her phone and social media to pinwheel. And it took a solid three weeks for us to all get used to it. But the craziest thing is my kid is now just like a goofy, silly teenager again. Yep. And and not what I was experiencing before. And I'm not saying our phone does that. But withdrawing not saying, not the, the, the draw. Media does that. Yeah. It's <laughs> I've a, heard too many parents. And and and, 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 and that's the encouraging thing too to me is like it's not it's not exactly like a drug habit or alcoholism or something like that. It's a low grade form of addiction. This, oh, I should check. Oh, oh, I should look. Um, and and what we've noticed over and over again is that it we're talking days and maybe a couple weeks, and you start to see real differences um in, yeah. in yourself and your kids uh, when when you withdraw. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Mr. Isaiah, I do appreciate your time today. And as we uh, talked about before the show, this is going to be in a, uh, a basically ebook form for parents to uh, download. So uh, just check out the CyberSafe team a website, and you can download this uh, this ebook with with all the different apps we are uh, interviewing, as well as the devices, just like a uh, pinwheel. Uh, so, Mr. Isaiah, I appreciate you being here. And any last advice for our parents? I would just say this. Look at phones as a skill-based thing. Your kids need to have the skills to use a phone in the different areas of life. Work, home, religion, communication, family, relationships. And if you break it down to that kind of a question, it stops to be being about how much screen time. Phones are good or bad. Apps are good or bad. And it's about how you use them and are making your child be a superhuman and a better person. And, and and I think that's a very achievable thing when we rewire the conversation to be about skills and competency. Excellent advice. And they can go to pinwheel.com. Is that correct? That's right. Excellent. Thank you very much.